Hanamura, game number one, another best of five. Group C, everybody. And yes, we got washed something in their third match. So they asked to play all of their games on one day. So they play three games in a row. But that also means that if they win another one here, they are first in their group and make it into the playoffs. And they are going up against Twitch team. And Twitch team has a bit of a story. And I am incredibly grateful to every single player that is currently playing on their side. So we had a bit of a weird thing happening today we started the broadcast and all of a sudden five minutes before the first matches happened one team said like yeah we're out we're not playing anymore which was a little bit last minute a little bit uncool but it put us into this awkward spot where it was pretty much okay so what are we doing right now can we get another team that subs in or do we just forfeit all of the matches and miss out on all the fun with Chogal and co and thankfully, there were quite a few people from my Twitch community that were in the Twitch chat that immediately said like, hey, I'd play. If you need somebody, I'll play. So this is a team full of people that play for not quite the first time. They had a little bit of time to get at least one or two practice matches in, I suppose. Uh, they formed, I think, two matches ago. But these guys have don't have a huge history of playing together. I have zero idea what skill level we're talking about here. There's a very good chance that we have a couple of the boys that are playing in the lower ranks. But they said, hey, before we're forfeiting all of these games, we're going to come together. We're going to form a team for this event and we're going to have some fun. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now. So they go up against Washed Something. I mean, right out of the gate, they're already going up against probably the strongest team in this group. So the Twitch team... <laughs> I mean, that's a little bit fucked up. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Bad Benny coming in with a Maiev pick against them? Wow. No mercy given. No mercy whatsoever. I expect big memes, though, from the boys in red. I actually don't know what to expect, but they've been actually, they, they've been in chat earlier going about just like, okay guys, let's get voice together, let's try this, like, what can we do? And they've been talking ever since, to my knowledge, to just prepare for this a little bit. But yeah, absolutely awesome. So yeah, big shout out to them. Super grateful, and that's exactly the spirit of the tournament. So we had a problem, we overcame it together, and that's exactly what this is about here. So we get Kalthas and we get Alexstrasza on the side of Washed Something. Whereas the Twitch team came in with various Varian Stukov. So they're tryharding a little bit over here. They came in and they are trying for Taunt with a follow-up on Stukov and uh, the uh, uh, the Lurking Arm. Alright. We'll see. Imperius gets banned out. They also targeted Nick a little bit with the Tracer ban at least. Now, obviously, again, this is still Meta Madness rules, so 10 heroes are perma banned for the entire group stage. It's the warm up for Meta Madness. Once that we're heading into the playoffs, there will be more heroes than just the 10 that you see here banned. And in addition to that, every hero can only be played once. So every hero that you see on the first map cannot be played in the same series again, making sure that we're not seeing the same heroes over and over again throughout a series. Personally, I'm kind of happy that we're getting Kalthas here. We haven't seen him so far. So getting a little bit of the Salami Boy in action. Ah, Shalanore is going to be uh, kind of fun. But yeah, what's the double pick now for the Twitch team? What are we getting? Martha Ale and Greymane. Yeah, they definitely want to get some kills. You come in with Varian, you drop the taunt, Stuka for the lurking arm, Greymane bullet in attack, and then Martha Ale chips in on top of that with the last rights to seal the deal. And he has Turanda and Illidan. So Illidan, Alexstrasza, and Turanda. All right, all right, all right. What's the theme here? Green eyes? No. Alexstrasza doesn't have green eyes. Something like that. The eyelash team. <laughs> a lot of dirty elves over there. And we don't like elves. We don't like tree huggers. Elves are just tree huggers. Smooching with trees all day, every day. We don't like that. But Illidan is always kind of fun. I really like my Illidan. So, well, that's game number one. Hanamura, everybody. Let's go. Let's see what the Twitch team can do against Washed Something, who so far have not lost a single map in this entire tournament. Well, they only played two matches, but still. <laughs> Hanamura, let's go. Game number one. Hazobs on Kalthas. Nick on Taranda. Going for the damage here. We have Yasuo on Alexstrasza and Bad Benny on Maiev with Copenhagen coming in on Illidan. 
Yeah, the little love triangle gets a little bit more spicy. I mean, there's always, you know, like the talk is about Illidan and his brother, about Tyrande abandoning Illidan and going over to uh, Malfurion, which I thought is a lie. And now we have Thick Thighs Alexstrasza in the mix. Woo! It gets spicy over here. But yeah, Nacho Libre is playing for the Twitch team and he's playing Grey Main. We got Booz on Medivh, Monchi on Varian, Nemesis on Malthael, and Sylvanus is playing Stukov. Let's go. So yeah, Illidan and Tyrande, they're once again kind of united, but honestly at this point when you are Illidan, then you are absolutely fed up with Tyrande and you're just standing there and you're like, go home, Karen. Go home. It's over. Especially if you have somebody, you know, like Alex Straza coming into the mix. I mean, all of a sudden the attention is on her. Tyrande doesn't like that at all. She was always the jealous type and has been uh, heavily jealous of other girls in the past here. And she obviously does not like that the attention is just going away from her. But Illidan, he doesn't care. First of all, because he's blind, but also because Alex Straza is just a lot hotter. I mean, she's a dragon after all, okay? If that is not some spicy play, then I don't know what is. Tyrande can't keep up with that. You have the, you have the, you basically have the choice between the Heroes of the Storm Karen with the green hair and a spicy dragon. I mean, I know what I'm going for. So Illidan, this is a no-brainer. And Alex Straza was always just pretty awesome. So yeah, there we go. Uh, she has all the advantages here. Either way, we got immediately a camp stolen. So the blue team apparently want to go for a bit of a quickie today here. They haven't lost the map yet. And I don't think they're planning on starting here. And Nemesis goes down and Monchi as well. Ooh, the double kill against the Twitch team. Yeah, that hurt a little bit. We got a true shot aura also. Obviously, he's going to try and get some damage out. Illidan is still all the way up at the top. And I'm a little bit afraid for the Twitch team what's going to happen later on in the game. And they went for the elf comp here. But I gotta say, they're showing zero mercy. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Okay, so at the same time, Tyrande is connecting a couple of owl owls. Going for the smoochies. And Illidan, he is taking camps. Alexstrasza with the Flames of Fury straight into the heat exhaustion. We got the Owls traveling across the map, but yeah, this is, this is a very, very heavy attack. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what exactly happened. If maybe somebody on the side of Washed Up has a hot hint Tinder date. If that's why they're hurrying up, it's like, guys, come on, I'm already five minutes late. Let's speed this up a little bit. It's actually a very good question. Like, who of the five would be the... Uh, the best candidate for the hot Tinder date. Who would that be? My money is on Nick. Clearly on Nick. Nick is a huge extrovert. I mean, he's always out there, you know, he's always swiping right. Swiping right and left all day, every day. So yeah, it has to be Nick. Nick is the one that is going on a day to day, so that's why they have to speed it up a little bit. But either way, now we got a level four, the Illuns chosen. And yeah, the some, same time all the way at the top. Our one versus one between Malthael and Illidan. Whereas the bottom play is still going on here. With the attack on the fort. So yeah, 18 stacks for Medivh. I mean, Booza is getting good stacks together. Nice dodge also on the stun, I like it. Nick was trying to trap him a little bit over there and it didn't work out for him. Ooh, that on the other hand hurts. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Bad Benny on my F. If that would have been anybody else, you know they would have gone for the kill and take him down. Even if they die themselves. Getting rid of the stacks is absolutely worth it. But Benny was just sitting there. Tank mentality. And he's just like, yeah, I'm not so sure. That, on the other hand, is still a problem. And that is the end of Medivh and his stacking. So he gets hit either way. Goodbye, my friend. And I assume this also means that we are soon going to kiss that fort at the bot lane goodbye too. Doesn't really look too great here. The gap in experience is also very, very quickly widening. Four kills to zero, two level advantage, and they're getting the four tier two. I mean, guys, uh, same time, people are always saying, you know, like, oh god, this looks like my, my quick match games. Ah, these guys are so bad. This is a team of randoms going up against one of the best teams that we currently have in the European scene. So you can see from the start, that there is quite the gap here. I mean, still a big shout out to the Twitch team for making this happen in the first place and helping out here, but they are obviously having a bit of a rough time in this one at least. That bot lane is getting, getting is, is being opened 
wide. We have a level advantage, a talent advantage, and a structural advantage already for Wash something. And the one we won at the top is also not really going the way of the boys in red here. They're losing the wall slowly. And yeah, this is a bit rough. Now, they're already starting to uh, collapse towards the top, and apparently Nemesis was quite unaware of the possible rotation. So he gets caught, and he gets uh, dropped as well. Oof, seven kills, two, one. But again, they got the kill, so they were able to get one kill against Alex Straza earlier. That's already all that you need. If you're going up against former HTC pros, I mean, that kill... Already making sure that they're not going to play the perfect game against you. So right now we have half a level until 10. This is when things are very likely going to get even worse for them. If the Sentinel gets stolen, that's always bad. I mean, Sentinels are just insanely strong. And they're fighting for it, I like it. They're coming in before level 10, they're killing Illidan. Me like it a lot, so yes, they come in at the perfect moment in time. They steal the Sentinel, and they're like, guys, we might lose this game, but it's not going to be that easy. Kelta's down, Mayev down, kill them all. Kill these elves. They're going for Yazu and they are gonna get him. Yes, they do. Five kills against seven and bam! The Twitch team coming in with some spicy play, some good damage and a very good choice. It was the one fight that they were able to get before level 10 connected for Washed Something. They decided to make it a do or die moment and it was absolutely the correct decision. They cannot afford to give up the Sentinel and then fall behind by level 10 abilities. So that's exactly what they needed to do there. So yes, they are now up against an opponent that has picked heroics and there's the value <laughs> <laughs> on the the thingy, the I know what it's called. I swear to God, I know what it's called. Um, pyro, pyroblast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I could also have said shitty talons. I would have been correct too. We get the hunt, by the way. So yeah, the hunt is in. Feel the hatred of ten thousand Stormly games. <laughs> Come on, Ilden. Where are you, boy? Where are you? Illidan, he's on his way, he's on his way, he's on his way. Where's the hunt when you need it? And he's still not here. Why are you just there it is? That's my boy. Alright. Goes for Greyman and takes him down. Illidan is kinda of fun. Illidan is fun to watch. Last rides came out, didn't get the kill, but they still go for Nick and he's alive! That's cheating! Alex Straza healed him just in time. Competent healers, what is this? That's not okay. So, yeah. Few more stacks for Medivh right now. We got 10 kills to 6. Illidan still in it to win it, but Stukov goes down, killed by Toronto. And now the bottom keep is wide open. Obviously, death timers are fairly low, so that's a bit of a, of a defender's advantage for the Twitch team. But they are losing more and more here. They just lost once again Medivh, but at least Illidan died, you know? So uh, the pressure is on. It's not stopping anytime soon, but they are defending as best as they can. And they're getting some kills in the process. We also have now 28,000 damage for my F, 20,000 damage for Malthale. He's top damage for the red team. Actually, he isn't anymore. Greyman has taken over now. Yeah, Greyman has gotten the numbers here. But level 13 is still going to drop for the blue team. And yeah, talent advantage is always a bit nasty. And of course, as the game continues, Illidan is going to become stronger and stronger. The more structures you take down, the more distance to safety exists for the opponent's team. And then Illidan can really shine in these fights. I mean, his biggest thing is to really just like leech onto a single target and just chase it down like there's no tomorrow. And there's the pyro! Oh, value! Value blast! Damn, he got the kill, nice! Good stun as well, so yeah, that was sweet. They get another kill as they're taking Stukov down, and Illidan comes in again. They kill Greyman, they follow up with Monchi, and that is a five man team wipe, maybe. No? Yeah. <laughs> we, we got it. Got him. All right. 17 kills to seven. They get the keep down at the bottom of the map. And yeah, I assume at this point they got to decide whether they want to try and make a play for the core. How they're going to play this one out. It seems like they're even debating back during the keep for just a second. But right, the Sentinel is still there. The last time that they tried that play, it is... 
it didn't really work out for them, but I assume this time they might have a chance here. They're also baiting this a bit. The ley line is of course up, but Medivh didn't touch ground. Died a few times, lost the stacks, now they got uh, the sentinel. They can also try and go for a few more camps, they can go for uh, the objective if they want to. Play through the top lane a little bit. Kalthas has completed his quest, so he's a bit safer here. And they are starting to escort this up towards the top. Uh, and talking about Kelthas, he got killed. Kelthas down! Yeah. Ashalanore! Salami! You know what's weird? I haven't seen a pepperoni pizza in Spain yet. That's weird. They have Diabola, they got spicy pizzas, but like a standard pepperoni pizza, I haven't seen one yet. Maybe I just visited the wrong places. But now that we're talking about salami, I mean, I haven't seen... Like, a stand-up pepperoni pizza, you don't really think that would be too much to ask for. I have to actually investigate this a little bit. Maybe I'm imagining things, but the last three uh, pizza places that I went to didn't have a pepperoni pizza. Which is kind of a crime, to be honest with you. So, yeah, sometimes you just want to go, you know, for the standard. You want to go for the oldie but goldie. Oh, they want to go for Lixstraza. She's dead. And she's not the only one. Greymane didn't make it either. Seemed for a moment like Illidan would die too, but he made it out. The hunt! The... I was about to say kill. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay. Illidan apparently gave one up and just let it... Let my F have it. Now we got 19 kills to 9! Exactly. So, level 16 is close. And obviously the goal is to go eventually for the core. Woo! That one didn't work out for them. I mean, it looked cool. There was a moment of suspense at least, but... Nah. Nah. Not happening. Spread the bombs. Spread them, baby. 33,000 damage from Althael. Same for Greymane. They're actually fighting a pretty intense battle of who takes the top numbers on the team. Uh, level 16 is, of course, now in too. Nick hasn't died yet. Nick is still sitting at zero. He's actually the only one in the entire game that hasn't died yet. The only player in this game that has not suffered a single death thus far. Uh, Danasian archery. Ooh, nice. Oh, that one hurt. Portal was at least up, so they could immediately retreat. But yeah, they got immediately dangerous. Right away. So, with that said and done, we have the attack at the top for another four. They're yeah, trying. Yeah, the bombs are still spreading. Okay, can they go for Medivh? Yes, they can. And they can also go for Varian. So that's going to be the fort. The fort is down and they're going to work on the next one. It's only two defenders topside. Malthel is still at the bottom of the map. Oh, and Greyman, yeah. He dodged the stun. He can't dodge the damage, so he dies. 13 minutes in and we have 34 deaths. 34 kills. Sentinel is up again. Yasu is already starting to burn this gate down a little bit. But now that they got the Sentinel, they can immediately do some serious damage over here. The wall is going to fall and as more and more ground is being lost, this is looking like a second keep. Especially since it's going to take another 14 seconds for Greymane to get back. So there's not really a whole lot of damage to throw against the blue team as they are attempting to end the game here. I mean that Sentinel alone is already just crushing it. And now that the entire thing's gone, have fun trying to defend your core. Yeah, not a single objective on this map, by the way. Not one objective has been used. But they are looking for kills, and there she is. That Dragon Queen! Okay, Alexstrasza with a bit more damage. Medivh is dead again! Poor guy, can't take a... can't get a break here! Another yeah. well, kill, Varian also eliminated, and the core is losing its shield. Pretty quickly. Tons and tons of damage in. 41,000 damage for Greymane. Seems like he's finally going to pull heavily ahead of Maltail. But yeah, the core is slowly starting to get dropped and he's not the only one. Maltail is already gone, so that establishes Greymane as a top damage dealer for the Twitch team. And for the blue team, with 27 kills to their name, we have Hazorps as the lone wolf at the top of the ranking. Nice damage. But still, shout out to Nick. Zero deaths, that's pretty impressive, with 38 on the board. Game number one, taken by Washed Something.
Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, Cursed Hollow, the map chosen by the Twitch team. Uh, we got washed something in the lead. And yes, obviously they are very highly favored to win this series, given that they're going up against pretty much a random community team. And uh, once again, a shout out to the boys in red for jumping in on short notice and making this happen. Now the themes continue. Watched Something has now played an Elf team, a Protoss team, we had an Orc team, and an Overwatch team. So the question is always what's left. They could dive into the Diablo universe a little bit. I don't think that a Terran team is possible given how many heroes are already banned, so that's most likely not going to be a thing. But it's going to be interesting to see what we'll get with all of this. First and foremost, we get the Vikings banned out. Tracer has also been banned. With Cursed, you might have a few different strategies open, but I'm not so sure about it. Abathur gets banned too, so apparently Wash Something is going to try and get rid of as many shenanigans as they possibly can. It's going to be a bit difficult, but kind of curious what happens here. They could also like focus on roles, but so far they haven't done that yet. We had one in the... It was actually in the first or the second best of five series that we had in Group A, where we had a uh, four healer team with Shogal, I believe. Was that four healers? Shogal? No, four, four healers and Vikings on Cursed Hollow. So that was actually kind of fun. Since then, we haven't seen that heavy of a focus on a specific role anymore. But now we get Sylvanas played, Lucio and Samuro on the other side. Okay, I'm a little bit intrigued. Are they just gonna go... No, they get stitches? Okay. So, apparently, we are done with the shenanigans. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, somebody has a hot Tinder date here. I'm only half joking at this point. They go for white main. But, yeah, we are going more and more for normal compositions where they're saying, alright guys, let's just go. And with Sylvanas... I gotta say, if they are going for some heavy siege, they might just go in one lane, fully commit, and go for it. But in that case, I suppose they would have maybe even dropped the Zarya into, into the comp. Not so sure. So yeah, let's see. How else? What else are they gonna play here? Yeah, we got the Haka banned, so no globals for them. Both globals banned, so they ban they ban macro. They are not they're trying to make sure that Watch Something has a bit of a harder time playing a macro game against them because they are realizing that they are gonna be likely out macroed if there's an opportunity for the blue team to use that in any way, shape or form. And rightfully so, I mean definitely true. They themselves have already Samuro, so that can help them. That's also where it became quite useful that Abatha was banned out, because that's a difficult comp. We get a little Ming into a mix now as well. And Ragnaros. Alright. Samuro Ragnaros is in the house. Melganis and Arthurs. Okay, let's go. Triple front line. Arthurs, Melganis and Stitches. Sylvanas and White Man. Yeah, the Undead are rising over here. They should have dropped a Zul into the mix, honestly. That leaves us with the final pick. And what do we get from uh, Monchi? What's the final one now? Especially against this many melees. What are you going to play here? That's the moment when you want to have Malthael. They go for Leo. That would also have been another good pick for Wash Something. But yeah, either way. You got the swing. You got the drain. Let's go, everybody. Cursed Holo. Map number two in the best of five here in Group C of Meta Madness. Game number two, Cursed Hollow, and we got Hazuops on Stitches. Nick on Arthurs, so we're gonna get the damage prince. Yazo on White Main, Copenhagen on Malganis, and Bad Benny on Sylvanas. On the right side of the map, Booza is currently playing Ragnaros for the red team, Monty on Leoric. We have Cat's Paw on Liming, Sylvanus on Lucio, and Nacho Libre on Samuro. I could do with a couple of Nachos. I could definitely do with some nachos right now. Long day already, a lot of casting, definitely getting hungry. And I'm currently not so sure anymore if I did myself any favors earlier when I prepared chicken that I can eat after this. 
couple of veggies into the air fryer after the stream and then I'm going to prepare my chicken in the oven. But I'm not so sure if I did myself a favor with it because now I have to think about it the entire time and I'm getting hungry. And we talked about pepperoni pizza and now we're talking nachos. I mean, it's just being rubbed in my face at this point. So, a bit nasty. This is a talent that makes me, by the way, salty. Eternal hunger is kind of cool and it just feels so useless. Even when you go full into the trade build and focus on the D, then you are not getting enough value out of it in my eyes. It would be so interesting if you would up the damage to 5 and see if that makes him more of a damage bruiser. That would be really cool to see. So while they are brawling it out in the middle, Ragnaros got downed at the bottom of the map. And up at the top, we have Malganus against Samuro. But yeah, I would have loved for Blizzard to at some point. I mean, I know that they don't care anymore, you know. But it would have been nice if at some point they would have just said, You know what, guys? We're not giving you proper patches anymore. But every now and then, you're going to get a patch where we're just going to tweak a couple of numbers. Just a few of the talents. We're just like increasing and like moving a little, like, a little bit of damage. That would have been interesting and might have shaken things up slightly. And in the case of Arthur's, it would have been really cool to see him with a bit more damage on that trade stack. I'm doing a fantastic job, by the way. Just missing out on every single kill that's currently being thrown out there. So apologies for that. As I said, it's been a long day. But I think we're finally catching one. Yeah, there it is. Five's the charm. So finally we get one. But yeah, six stacks for, uh, for Arthur's. So we'll see if he can get a little bit more with this one. But should be pretty good. Down to the bottom of the map. Arthur's already has to retreat though. And we got Ragnaros. Baby Rag is one of the best skins that they all that they ever threw out there. I gotta admit. That one is pretty fun. Did they ever ever have Ragnaros plushies? I mean that is honestly the plushie. Baby Ragnaros plushies. That would have been the play. But I don't ever think they ever had these. I mean, anyways, now we get Leo, still a little bit uh, low, but he didn't get caught by this, so already to hearth back. We now get the Death Lord over here, and they're stealing camps away, so they actually invaded the opponent's siege giant camp and claimed it. All the way up at the top, we are getting still our 1v2, because Catspaw has been starting to help Samura out a little bit, and Stitches is just waiting for somebody to say hello here, apparently. Also interesting. See how stitches are tight? It was all a bait. From the beginning, it was just bait. They tried to bait them down and nothing happened when they finally arrived. <laughs> they came in and just nothing. So, yeah. But either way, we have Nick roaming the map. Ro oh, fights continue. Apparently, they're just sieging up down here. The hook is true to target and they can get a kill no but instead i think they are going to lose a hero now yaz is doing his best to stay alive but ragnaros is just coming in die exact and kills him and kills sylvanas all right seems like hazobs is not going to make it either goodbye big boy he wanted some play time he got some play time and then he found death so yeah he's dropped did he just b-step no, he actually half back. It would be so much cooler if you just B stepped him. Then another kill in the middle. And that is also nine stacks by now for the eternal hunger. Yeah. Get the damage. Get all the damage. And they are working on Monty over here. I'm actually a little bit surprised they didn't just go for rune tap or something. He went into the immortal coil and personally I like the death coil build. But I expected Nick to just go for some kind of rune tap build, home in on all the details and see what he can do with that. There's a single triple that has been taken by the blue team, so watch something is already slightly ahead on the objective now that the second one has spawned and they're immediately trying to make a play for it. We got Ragnaros here, who gets hooked! Howling Blast connects two, and ooh, our boy is low. But he also still has the trade up that he can use in order to interrupt this even further if he wants to, I suppose. Yeah, the stacks still keep coming. And there it is. The trade is in. Molten Core, baby. Trying to deal with Sylvanas as she destroys some of the towers. Now, Ganas isn't here yet. They're playing a 4 versus 5 currently. Against the Molten Core 2. So, yeah, there's a lot of damage that comes from uh, Twitch team. Yeah, they're doing 
the best they can, but now that Melganus has arrived, this is gonna get a lot harder. Yeah, especially since he's trying to set some kills up for the blue team. Yasu is focused though, and if he dies, that's all of your support gone. Then again, same is also true with Lucio Falls, and he's the first one to get dropped. And after that, Li Ming is a close second. Monchi, another one to get murdered. They got level 10 now as well, so matters became worse. Washed something with two tributes to a zero. And now with level 10, they can go boss, they can go for forward. They got a lot of options now. A lot of stuff they can do here. And Battle Arthurs goes for Syndragosa. And... Just... What? I mean, yeah, but what's the goal here? What, what was the play? I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do. They're getting some damage on the fort, but I don't know how much they can actually do with this. This seemed like it was not quite intentional. Like he just fat-fingered his R as they were fighting for the camp, which they are now maybe even losing as well. And then they were ho thinking to do something with it. But <laughs> yeah, this was a little bit on the strange side. <laughs> I think Nick is already starting to get tired here. Ragnaros is up at the top. Completed his quest too. Down here they're still fighting. Now it's a level, level 11 versus 9.5. And, and yep, that's the end of Leo. Leo dead and Arthur still busy in the middle. Death Coil saves him here. That could have maybe been, been the end of Arthur's. Thanks to that fort. So yeah, they're still fighting this one. The bottom fort has fallen. And with the help of Sylvanas, they're just sieging up as best as they can. So they take down the entire bot wall. I'm not quite sure how long they can actually sustain themselves here. This is a 4 versus 4 at the end of the day. But with all of the damage that they're doing, they're looking actually very good. Lava Wave, yes! I mean, that saves them on the macro level a little bit. The Lava Wave is in the house! Sylvanas is dead! But so is Leo. Leo is dead too. Lava Wave hits an additional uh, wave, by the way. So perfect timing here on this one. Really well timed. Gets the maximum out of that ult. Arthur's is still playing with Ragnaros up at the top. And down here, again, they will have to abandon their siege position. Yes, they got a couple of kills, but with no minion support, it's nearly impossible to siege this up properly. So Yasu is also going dropped rather low. And that's the end of White Main. Yeah. Copenhagen. I mean, he might be able to escape, but it's not looking too good for him either. So Copenhagen may be able to get out. Top side, we still have Nick playing against Ragnaros and getting some serious damage out. And also good stacks, obviously, for his trade. He's sitting at 18 now. I mean, it's not insane, but it gives him a certain amount of damage. And with the death coil, this should be the end of Rag. And yes, he goes down. So, that's nearly 80... <laughs> B-steps. Yep. That's nearly 20, 80 additional damage for uh, for Arthur's. His damage is at 25,000. Again, I think it could be even higher. I think Blizzard should have adjusted that a little bit. The other 13 talents are in too. And Li Ming doesn't really stand a chance here. So another hit and even more damage. Arthur's reigning supreme right now. 21 stacks already. And now up on the channel. The level 13 talent with the Remorseless. And obviously the hook extension also. Here comes the... Uh, Quick hit straight into the curse. They get the third tribute. Yeah, and with that, they can already start and take some of those, maybe back to door some of those minion waves. They're actually fighting up at the top more so than anything else. Arthur, yeah, nice attempt by Rack. A little bit too obvious. He was going for the trade again, but got interrupted there. Would have been really nice to save some of the structures, but that backfired very, very quickly. Bot lane is wide open, by the way, so that keep is likely going to take damage, especially since multiple heroes at the top have now fallen. Lucio is dead. Leo went even March, so he went full in on the March meme. Mid lane Ford is about to get destroyed. Bot lane keep is losing hit points quickly. So the momentum swing for the blue team is just enormous. And about as you would expect, obviously. Nice save by Ragnaros. Went for the lava wave, and that helped with the bottom defense. But up at the top, even with the molten core that he just got through, it doesn't seem like he can really have the big impact that they're hoping for. Ford in the middle and top have been destroyed. Bottom keep is low. Keep at the top likely going to fall. Washed something. They are playing all out here. More or less. We now have the Frost Strike, so cooldown reduction is already in. More and more stacks coming together for Arthurs, and now they're going into the middle lane to try and take another keep down, I suppose. Or simply travel down to the bottom of the map and uh, take the final one there. 
But yeah, they are just crushing it. As you would expect. They're going up against a Twitch team which was formed solely for the purpose of subbing in here today as a team. And honestly, for that, they are doing fairly well. Five kills against 25. By now, we have with level 16 also the Frostmourne feeds. So more and more stack opportunities for Nick as long as he's diligent about it. He has 120 damage now on that hit. And he is going to rank up the numbers as this continues. So, yeah, they are hoping for more kills, hoping to go into the middle and help Sylvanas to drop just another major structure. And then eventually the core is going to be the target. 40,000 damage for Nick. Again, he's getting good stacks together, no denying it. Li Ming, ah, solo killed by Benny here. And the keep is gone. Copenhagen surviving through all of it. But now it's, of course, only Nacho Libre and Booza over here that still survive. And with that hook, Samuro has to yield the field as well. 11 minutes in and they're sieging up on Keeps and Koa. It's kind of funny that the entire wall here is still standing. Damaged, yes, but it's still in play. It's kind of amusing. They're escorting catapults in and uh, the shield is slowly falling. But the problem is, of course, still the same. You're going up against Ragnaros that doesn't hesitate to drop the the lava wave whenever he has a chance and that alone already helps him significantly to keep the catapults and minions at bay but since all the structures are now about to be destroyed there's just no saving this in the long run anymore Ragnaros with another trade trying to just somehow delay things at least but even that seems to be problematic and Nick is stacking stacking more and more he's sitting at 38 now so he's really just using that cooldown reduction and the second charge on Frostburn to get more damage together and by now we have 26 kills to 5. <laughs> the core is losing the shields even more rapidly and catapults are going to be pushing on all lanes but thanks to Ragnaros they are not having any minion problems yet but obviously the onslaught just continues and the higher in levels we go the long the more time passes the longer the death timers are and the harder this def defense becomes 41 stacks by now for Frostman. 42, so he's nearly at 170 damage now. 53,000 damage for him. Getting very close to Li Ming and also to Lu uh, to Leoric on the other side in regards to their damage output. Core is about to fall and that's a 2-0 lead in the best of five, everybody. Watched something, taking another victory here on Cursed Hollow. They are now 6 and... No, sorry, 8 and 0 in the group. Game number three, match point number one, Tomb of the Spider Queen. Watched something, I'm pretty much guaranteed to have first spot in the group right now. But they could make it a perfect run if they just came in and now won this series with a 3-0 as well. That would put them 9-0 in maps in the group. Now, again, one of the top three teams in the tournament, hands down, not only in the group stage, in the tournament itself. And we have some real spicy teams. So once we're heading into the playoffs, there's going to be some crazy games. Playoffs are going to be a double elimination system, by the way, in case that you were not aware of it. And if you watch this on YouTube right now, you can also jump into the description of the video. There's some international information and links there in case that you want to watch the playoffs live, for example, and you want to follow all of the action there or you have additional questions that you need answered. So yeah, feel free and don't hesitate to do that. Jungle gets banned. So now 20 heroes that have been played are not available anymore. And the 10 heroes that you see on your screen, they are also not available any longer. In total, 30 heroes that are not up for grabs anymore. And then the 6 that are getting banned in the draft itself. Gonna force them a little bit more outside there. So what are we getting this time from uh, Washed Something? They went for 2 of the Spider Queen. And this is wave clear. I mean, again, you got your Zul... Go full Asmodan. I'm actually a little bit shocked at the lack of Asmodan play. I think we saw Asmodan once or twice, and I would have assumed that a few more teams would try to cheese with Demonic Invasion on level 10 and on bigger maps, or maybe with the Medivac combo, just try and do some more structural damage, some backdooring, and uh, yeah, anything along those lines. Hasn't happened at all, and I'm a little bit surprised by it, I gotta say. Yeah, we get Nazebo though! Nazebra! 
And Ariel. <laughs> Ariel played by Nick. Whip it, buddy. Yeah. Nazima is already going to be funny. It's already a good pick. Oh. Uther Maltail? Do we get all supports? Was Deckard banned? Probably not. Nah, they go zero. I was thinking how deep they want to go into uh, into meme world now. But with Uther, he's going to be doubling as a main tank. Malfurion is your main support. So, yeah. Alright, 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 alright. There was hope for a second. I mean, we, again, we had one game with four healer and Vikings. One Cursed Holo, actually, in Group A. That was pretty fun. It was actually very, very fun. But okay, Lunara gets bammed. No Bambi in this one. Bambi is out. The one thing that still shocks me is that someone like Carrigan is still alive. Hasn't been banned or anything. So if <laughs> Nick could technically do that. I doubt that he will, honestly. But yeah, they're banning Cho. <laughs> Why? There it is, Asmodan! Asmodan and Ana. So now we got a nano boosted Asmodan when he's stacked later. Kel'Thuzad is in as well. <laughs> and a nano boosted Nazebo. Yeah, but Asmodan, you can actually stack really well. Oriel can help with the stacking. You can get somebody else there too. Tracer gets picked. Tracer wasn't picked yet? What? Alright, yeah. Now that I think about it, she was banned twice, I believe. And now made it through the draft. All right, Tracer in the house, and we get a Lily. Triple support, Asmodan, Nezipo. Okay, now it gets interesting. Tomb of the Spider Queen, everybody. Game number three. Let's waste not. Let's let's not waste more time. We have the third map with the triple support. We get an Asmodan fine, and we have a Kelthazan on the other side. What more do you want? Let's go. Meta Madness Group C. Hazops on Zebo. We get Copenhagen on Anna. Bad Benny on Asmodan. Nick is playing Oriel. And Yazu is playing Lily. To the right side of the map, Booza for the Twitch team is playing Zul. We got Monchi on Tracer. Nacho Libre on Malfurion. Sylvanus on Uther. And Nemesis is playing Kalthosan. I'm very interested to see if we're going to get some proper stacking for Asmodan, if he gets some assistance from the rest of the team, or how they are playing it right now. Because normally when you're really trying to make an Asmodan work, you need somebody that has a little bit of AoE that can time it properly around the Orb of Annihilation to make sure he stacks. And then once he has some base stacks, then he can do it by himself. But the early waves are fairly important when you're playing with Asmodan. That's one of the reasons why he was in the past, played a lot with Johanna, and still I guess is. But maybe here they're not going to fully focus on that all this much. So, yeah. Instead, we already have kills happening. Nazebo is down, Tracer is down, and oof. That is... yeah, that's getting a little bit dicey. Now, for this game, 30 heroes were already banned out, so they definitely had to dive a little bit deeper into their hero pools in order to make it work. But obviously, there is a meme element to the composition of the blue team that should not be denied. Not a lot of stacks right now here, so this could definitely be done a little bit better with the help of Oriel. But as I said, in a normal game, you would normally take, let's say, Jojo or anybody else. Jojo has been perma banned for the group stage, so she can't be used. But Benny is doing what he can. But as you can tell, he's not getting all of the minions. Normally, you would work with auto attacks on the backline minions a little bit. Then you would use the orb, and then you would get somebody else in that has some AoE to finish and uh, seal the deal, but it's not quite happening yet. In the meantime, Yasu gets attacked down here at the bottom of the map, so he's basically able to rush away with Lili at this point. Noteworthy that Kel'Thuzad obviously is attempting to stack as well, and well, that's not too bad. Nemesis, look at that. They're actually getting two kills to one. Tracer is doing a lot of dying on the other hand, so Monchi here is having some problems. So, yeah. And Ana is dead too, damn. Kel'Thuzad! What the hell? All of a sudden, the red team is starting to crush it. We got 42 stacks for Asmodan. He's getting a little bit more together here, but he's also very hesitant to walk out and take those gems, and for good reasons. So, this could become a little bit more interesting than initially expected. At least here in the early game, the blue team is struggling. Now, oftentimes that changes once that level 10 abilities are here. But... maybe? Maybe there's a chance. 
Hazu not really stacking too well. I mean, he doesn't really have any assist. So if he can now rain a little bit more free on the top and the mid lane, then it's going to be easier for him. But at least for the time being, he's sitting at 26 stacks on the baseline. That's nothing too insane, nothing to write home about yet. But as I said, with a bit of help, he might just be able to get that done a little bit faster. Going for the Toad build helps you to take structures down very quickly for sure. So if you're doing that, that helps a lot. And uh, yeah, as he gets the stacks together, we'll see how much he can capitalize on this as the game continues. Asmodan is now at 84 stacks. So he's getting a fair amount here, obviously using the heroes on the other side also to stack a fair bit. But these are definitely moments, you know, see, you see with the auto attacks against the backline minions, that's really where you're going to get some proper stacks together. Would have been even better if somebody else in the team would have helped them out here. But they're doing fairly okay now. And this is a composition that is scaling well into the late game. Nick is also stacking, so in level 1 he went straight into the increasing uh, clarity here with the Sacred Sweep. Now we got the repeated offense, so it's all about him get, hitting his abilities properly. There's a lot of late game potential for the team, especially with Nazebo, obviously, but also with Asmodan. And then again, you have on the other side Kel'Thuzad, who with the completion of his baseline quest is also significantly going to improve his damage. So yeah, the hits are coming, and Asmodan is right there. Nazebo playing it out with Zul. And Haas has to be very careful, since he's been the one between the top and the mid lane, he also has a lot of gems that they want to turn in, if they get an opportunity to do that. Spray game on point, yeah, that's how I like it. And yes, there we are, immediately coming in with the B-step, me likey, showing Nick who's boss over here. So Zul is not caught, Lily on the other hand, she's dead. Both of the supports are gone, two of the supports. Only Nick has survived. I'm thinking about Nick as an assassin, so he's playing Assassin Oriel, let's be honest. That's what's really happening here. But yeah, 57 stacks for Nazebo. He's still stacking it up, sitting at 60, it's not too bad. But there's the first Web Weaver wave. And nice, good hit. Straight into the wall, couple of hits together also with the frogs. The toads are in! And that's gonna help them to defend, of course, as well. Yeah. But careful my friend, you have 28 gems, you don't want to lose those, Kind of important. So yeah, they're pushing this back at the bottom of the map, as I already said, once that we have level 10 abilities and I expect the blue team to have a bit of a spike in power. I mean, power spike is obviously going to happen for both teams, but just with the coordination and the level they're playing at, I would assume that they are going to be able to capitalize on it a little bit more. Asmodan dying is also slowing the stacks down a little bit. Yazu at the same time, he went into the Serpent build. Yeah, top lane is very much abandoned down at the bottom of the map. They're also struggling. The problem is Asmodan dying is really an issue since he is one of the few heroes that can do actual damage and siege damage. Now they're trying for Nick and he's still alive. There's has three healers down at the bottom of the map. The problem with all of those healers is they can do great on the sustain, but they are just struggling on getting any damage together so that they can take those web weavers down. At the top lane though, Benny's helping out. Oh, Hazu! Yeah, and he's alive. Okay, he still had the fountain cooldown up. That helped you. But they definitely need these two to stack properly into the late game or they're gonna run into lots of trouble as this game continues. Yeah, I'm talking about running. <laughs> Yaz is trying to run away. That's 26 gems they just lost. Bit unnecessary, if you ask me. That was a bit telegraphed what they just did there. And against level 10 abilities, I mean, what exactly did you expect? And now these two bad boys are also going to get caught. Hazu is at 34. He's trying to sneak. And he is able to get away because Nick went in with a big whip. Asmodan dying, that was inevitable. But saving the 33 gems on the side of Hazobs, that was big. Really big. What a juke play, and kudos to Nick for that perfect whip here. We really can tell that Nick's sex dungeon has paid off. I mean, all those years of practice, one whip after another, you thought he's on the quiet side, but yeah, he definitely isn't. So yeah, that man has practice, and it shows here. Nobody else would be able to wield a whip like this. You're either an archaeologist, and you're going for the Indiana Jones play, 
or you have a secret sex dungeon at home. And with Nick, I think we all know what the truth is of the matter. So yeah, job really well done by him. Without him, I believe that we would have seen Hazu fall and lose those gems. But they still have to deliver. They have 38 gems over here, and Hazu hasn't turned them in, but there's the opportunity, and this time nobody is going to interrupt. All right, so. Now we got the Eagles in. We also got the Water Dragon. We have a Ravenous Spirit, which is already already a little bit of a red flag because we've seen too many upgraded Ravenous Spirits on level 20. Vile Infection! That's all that we need. That's all that we accept. But Asmodan has the Black Pool. So he's nearly done with his level 1. Yeah, Eagles is already out. Ooh, Nick is deleting a ton of damage, but it's fine. Okay, so quest completed. But Asmodan has died in the middle of the map as the rest has jumped in. That's 10 kills to 2, by the way. 10 kills to 2. Well, make it 11. They are not doing really well here. They are definitely struggling, and they're struggling a lot. Now, Nick is at 15,000 damage right now. 27,000 for Lily. <laughs> Which is actually disgusting. She has more damage than Trace, I'm just saying. At least Hazu turned in. There's at least some light at the end of the tunnel. But they are falling farther and farther behind, and there's another red web wave coming too. So the earlier one did damage, especially because Asmodan was dead at the time. But at least they didn't lose any major structures. Now they have the problem that two of those forts are likely going to fall, and then you got to deal with catapults too. So yeah, that's still a little bit tricky. Now the bright side. Oh boy. Yep. All the damage. Oh, the poison over as well. I mean, they unleashed everything here. I think some credit to the Twitch team. They've done some serious damage over here, but what can they eventually do with all of it? Yeah, the stacks keep coming for Asmodan. It's trying to defend, but it is unlikely that they're going to be able to hold this. They go for Zul. Now, that might be a kill if they can trap him, but no, not quite. Not even that is hitting. So eventually they might get the kill here, but honestly at what cost? This is literally a full five man as is chasing a single kill. And they get it, so apparently they don't like Zul very much. But now there's a trap being laid down here too. Yeah, one hit is in, and at least this time Lily walks away. But they lost two forts, as already predicted previously. One level is all that they're missing though. It's actually kind of impressive. One level is all that they're missing. We got the chain of command now as well. So that's some macro that they can use to keep some of the structures alive, to push the lanes out. Stacks for Nazebo are going very well, by the way, now. He's at 130. So he's only roughly 40 short before he's going to get the uh, vile infection barrier broken through. So if they go for these prolonged fights later, that's probably the play to make. Really not a fan of the upgraded Ravenous Spirit, as strong as it is. I think Vile Infection for the fights that they are fighting here is going to be way better. Especially since they have a lot of sustain, so that allows Nazebo to stay in the battle a bit longer. But they need to do some structural damage, and that's when Nazebo is also absolutely key. He went for the Toad build after all. So if you come in and you Nano boost him, for example, he can take structures down within seconds. A turn in would go a long way. There's two turn ins that we've seen for the red team. It was an attempt to interrupt at least that. But, yep. I'm not able to sneak anything, and now Tracer is back on the way. Couple of long distance hits from Asmodan, but not really doing too much yet. Okay. Nick made it out. You gotta evade those roots. Those roots have been a huge problem for them. And nice! Good Aegis timing. Aegis was absolutely on point. Water Dragon has been used. Monty able to jump out too. Everybody is really play, bringing their A game right now. But it's the level 16 that worries me a little bit for the blue team. Because Twitch team is trying to capitalize on that momentum that they've gained previously. And so far they're doing a good job with it. Yeah, Zul with another really nice hit. Asmodan responds in kind and takes Kalfuzan down. Three-pointer right there. Big three-pointer from Asmodan. 41,000 damage for Kalfuzan. Top damage in the game. Yeah, he's been crushing it, absolutely, but that wasn't too bad either. Now, Malfuriator is getting killed by the Ravenous Spirit. So with two heroes dead, all of a sudden, there is some space on the map. They have some time, they got some space, and they can set, uh, especially in the Zebo, straight into a position where he can use his toads to take structures down. And the turn in is obviously more than possible. The Zebo, yeah, that's exactly where he shines now. Look how quickly he reduces that to 50% HP. Super quickly. 
So, yeah, big, big damage from him. They come in again at the top lane, mid lane, bot lane, all going to be attacked. 16 talents are about to be ready for them too. And the Zeebo is at 160 stacks as we speak. All right, things are looking definitely a lot better for them. Now they still have a chance here. The Trample is in. Also kind of nice. Gets you out of harm's way. And since a lot of their strategy is hinging on them surviving, the healers included, that's of course one way how Asmodan might be able to get out of a precarious situation here. One fort definitely going to fall. I suppose that the rest might just be saved by uh, the Twitch team. They have Zul at the bot lane. He's definitely going to deal with the weapons. But look at this damage! This is ridiculous. Nezebo is just bonkers. Absolutely bonkers in a situation like that. Nano boost is still available. But yeah, they are looking for maybe even a keep here. I mean, the keep is definitely going to take damage. The question is, can they take it down? If Nazebo gets close enough, there is more than a small chance that this is going to happen. And yeah, again, Ravenous Spirit being used. Ooh, and he gets out. He got out. Tracer is low. And you know what else is low? That keep. Keep's gone. Keep is gone. One opportunity was all they needed. Now Kel'Thuzad is dead. Like, what the hell is happening here? I expected them to take a fort, maybe two. Then I was okay on board with the keep. Now they're already looking at the core. And it's the Nazebo show. It's really the Nazebo show. His siege damage right now with the help of Asmodan is crazy. Another hit and barely a save on Monchi. I'm not sure they can end here. It's 14 minutes in. They might be better advised to go for some of the structures, but the fact that they're in this position in the first place is just crazy. So now Uther is making it out. But yeah, it's getting nuts here. Absolutely nuts. The Zebra has 130,000 siege damage right now. I would love to see just damage against structures at this point. That would be a stat that I would be really, really interested in. Nothing else, just damage against structures. Nazebo would absolutely rock that chart. So they're coming in again. Tracer is dead. It's just bananas. Absolutely bananas. More hits coming. Yeah, they're nibbling at that shield a little bit. But Hazu alone is going to have a tough time. He doesn't have level 20 yet. With that, it would be a lot easier for him. But he's still stacking it up. And yeah, now he becomes the target. Ana is dead. I don't think they can stay here. It's just too much in the long run. They have to wait for later in the game. Or can they somehow really do this? 186 stacks now for Nazebo. Asmodan is also getting more and more together. He has 180 nearly. Yeah, there's only two supports left, two healers left to help them with this. Another potential kill against Zul, but he makes it out. These Revenant Spirits that we're seeing from the Zebo are a problem. That on the other hand was also an issue. Nicely done by Kel'Thuzad. Yeah, they gotta retreat here. They gotta retreat. They just can't. It's just too much. It's just too much. They hit! Oh, Uta. Low. How are they still alive? Another big heal coming in from Nick, and they're still on the way back. They're still alive somehow. And Ana is nearly back too, by the way. So, uh, up at the top. Oh, baby! 31 gems! And he's gone. 31 gems. Lily is looking for gems and adventure. And she finds both. She found maybe a little bit too much adventure, though. Yeah, there's the Aegis. That helps, but also sets up a nice comp for... Uh, Kel'Thuzad. That's the problem with the Aegis right now. If you use that at the wrong uh, moment in time and you're not really accounting for Kel'Thuzad, then it very quickly turns against you since she, she just simply uses it as a bullseye moment. Ana is dead. She just came back. Literally moved back on the map and immediately exploded. And now Nazebo is dead too. Okay, they definitely stayed too long and now they might pay the price. They stayed way, way too long in the middle. Hoping to go for the core, and now they are paying the price. They're gonna face boss and core, uh, sorry, boss and web weavers, and it might go to the core. Mortal wound is in, the divine hurricane, and we got the damned return. Now things are gonna get incredibly dangerous. The timing is a little bit off though for the red team. They took the boss. But they didn't turn in immediately. They're doing it now with a bit of a delay. So the boss defense will have started by the time that the web beavers are here. Nazebo isn't there yet, but they can at least play this out with Benny a little bit. So this could have been timed better, but it's still going to be powerful. It's still going to be strong, obviously. But as you can tell here, it's a little bit of free defense that you are getting. You get... yeah... You, Pretty much you can defend against the entire boss more or less for free. Not 100%, but it's it's close. It's, it's really close. Asmodan is completely done now. Monchi misses the kill. 
Web Weavers are here, and the hits keep coming. All right. Keep might fall. I think they're going to lose a lot in structures. The question is, are they going to lose the game? And also, level 20 is getting closer and closer and closer. Here's the opportunity. 200 stacks on Nazebo. They got that. Nazebo is top damage for the team. He is soon going to be top damage in the game. Keep is gone, but they hold on to the core. Core should still be fine. Ooh, big hit there. Yeah, very, very big hit. That one hit hard. And that's the end of the Web Weavers. There's the 20, and there's the Violent Faction. Time for Nazebo to murder people. Nazebo is gonna kill, and he's gonna kill everything. Especially with the Nano boost that he has right now. Yeah, Ice Block that damage. Nicely done. They have to keep him alive. He's gonna be by far the main damage dealer at this point. But they also have to account for the keep at the bottom of the map, and they are not doing that at all. So they're losing this one too. They might have lost too much ground already. Nazebo just got another 10,000 damage in the last 10-15 seconds simply by getting Violent Faction. But they are under so much pressure here, I'm not quite sure if they can defend this. It seems like it's too much. They had good wave clear from Benny, but the core is now slowly falling. Catapults are there. The red team, they want the win. They want the win. That would be the first loss for Wash something. Would be the first loss Nazebo with big damage, but it might be too late. 50, 40 percent. Ah, two down. Ah, Tracer's dead too. They had 40 percent on the core. 40 percent. Three heroes dead. How do they deal with it now? Can they cross the map and end the game? That's the question. Anna has her ult. They should be able to end the game. I wouldn't even waste time with anything else. Just cross the map and go for the core. You got Nazebo with Vile Infection and full Toad build. And you got Nana, uh, Anna with, uh, with Nano Infusion. That has to be enough. They need to be careful of Kalthuzad. But this should be enough. Keep in mind, they don't got a revive. So they should be able to make this happen right here, right now. If they get, get the kill. Yes, they can get the kill. This has to be it. At this point, Hazu just has to go for the toads on the core. He's going to melt this thing away. 216 stacks. But look how quickly he burns this down. Look how quickly he kills this thing. This is insane. Oh my god. 3-2-0. 9-2-0 maps in total in this group. And 3-0 in best of 5 wins. Wash something takes the first spot in the group as they advance to the playoffs. Congratulations. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.